Hi guys, I am back to make another Bitmoji Classroom tutorial for Google Slides. The first one that I made was more about the basics and how just to put things in place and order them. This time I'm going to show you some new slides that I made and also how I use them and how I embed different links and activities within them. So I had a lot of questions about, well, how do you use this? So I'm just going to walk right into it and I will share a link that will take you to these slides at the end. These are some of my new Google Classroom slides for my Bitmoji Classroom, and I really like this one. I've been using it a lot, and I tried to set it up so it's like my remote learning. You can see I'm videotaping myself. So in the link with these slides, it'll have my Bitmoji, but this time they're all editable. So you'll be able to move things around and change everything if you don't like a piece of decor. So for this slide, what I do is I link in my YouTube video for my students every morning. I make a video of myself with my anchor chart, like a morning meeting with my students. I put it on YouTube and I share it right here. Now, the way that I've shared it, and this is true for any YouTube video, you just go to insert and then you click on video. Very, very simple. This is what will come up every time. Right here, you will paste the link for the YouTube video that you want to use. So. I don't have one in my dashboard, but this is the last one I had here, which is the same video that I have up. So you just click it, you hit select, and it will put it right there. And you can see over on the side, it gives you a little bit of a preview and you can choose when to start it and when to stop it. So if there's just a segment of a YouTube video that you want your students to watch, you can clip that and there are no ads when you show YouTube videos through Google Classroom this way. And that's always a big benefit because sometimes the ads are not appropriate for the students. So that's one way, here is the link. I just really just make it the size of my screen. I'll put it there. It's usually in front of my Bitmoji. So then right click and I will just order it to the back. See, perfect. And now it's actually behind the video that I already had there. Just in case there's any problems with the links because they should just be able to click on the play button and it opens. But if for some reason the link isn't working, I always add it down here too in the comments or in the speaker notes, just in case for some reason a student can't click on it. The next slide is the same thing, just showing you another way that you can do this. Um, I sometimes post my lessons on here just like this, where you start by just naming your teaching point, and this is going to be their little pretest. So this is easy. You can turn anything into a link. I usually try to use the words click here because the students, it's pretty obvious for them. But to turn something into a link, you just find the link that you want to be inserting into your Google Slides. So for me, it was this Google form. I'm just copying the link, any link again. And what you do is you just highlight wherever you want that link to go. So for this one, I did click here, but I'll just pick, let's say, um, simple machine. I wanna make that my link. All I do is I highlight it. I'm going to click on the link button at the top, which right now is hidden. Here it is. Normally, if I don't have this box open on the side, it would be at this top bar. So if you don't see it at the top, always click on these little three dots because they'll hide any important tools that, um, that don't fit. So you just click on insert link after you've highlighted the words that you want to link. Right there, text says simple machine. Those are just the words I've highlighted. And then for link, I will just paste that link in there. I hit apply and there you go. Now, if I click on Simple Machine and I click on that link, it is going to take me to the pre-assessment for that lesson that I just showed you. So that is how you add links. It's very, very easy. Again, you just highlight the regular words that you want to turn into a link. You go up and you click on the little paper clip here and you just paste the link in and hit apply. Very easy. This is one of my favorites also. Um, I'm very excited about this one. I've seen a lot of teachers do something like this. It's fun to recommend books to students and we don't have that opportunity as much in remote learning because we only have so much control over what the students are going to be doing at home. 
So this is another option. Now what we have right here on the bookshelf, and just to pause for a second, I almost always add these speech bubbles. They're called callouts. It's just in the shapes and you go to callouts and they're down here at the bottom. Um, but no matter how familiar my students become with this, I think it's always helpful to have just a little bit of direction for them. So what this is right here, these are screenshots of books that I found online. I like to use Epic for my reading. I can track all of my students reading on Epic. So right here I have Epic open and I'm just gonna walk you through the whole process of adding a book. The first thing you want to do is just to screenshot the cover and when they're this size, it's actually perfect. So we will just put pick one of these here. Um, we'll just do big Nate here. So I'm just gonna screenshot it. And I know a lot of you ask how to screenshot on computers that are not Macs. Unfortunately, I don't know. But Command Shift 4 gives you the option to select screenshot on a Mac. So I'll do Command Shift 4. And I have mine defaulted that when I screenshot, it just saves directly onto my desktop. That's it. Okay, and while I'm on Epic, I'm in the place where I want my students to read this book. And remember, you can even do this on YouTube. You can find read alouds of books on YouTube and link them the same way. Just look up a image of the cover and do the, the same exact way. Then you would just attach the YouTube link instead of the Epic reading link. So here's the link for my book. I'm going to copy that. Now I will go right back to my slides. First, we need to add our book cover. So I will do insert, image, upload from computer. It's usually one of the first ones. Let's see here, there it is. The complete big name. I hit open and it'll drop it right in. Oops, and then I'm just going to resize it to make it the size that I want it to fit on the shelf. And it's kind of hard. Sometimes I end up stretching out the shelf size so the kids can really see the books. So now Big Nate is sitting on the shelf, but it's just a picture right now. Whereas these ones, you can see they literally link you to a book. So when I click on Big Nate, this is super, super simple. If it will let me, there we go. If I click on Big Nate, it is the same exact thing as adding a link to words. See the little paper clip at the top again? Click on it. Paste your link, hit apply, and then you click out. And then when you click on the book again, there you have it. Now, when students have access to these slides, I always make sure that they are view only. Um, and just for that purpose, so that they can't be dragging these books around, which means you can see that when I click on things, sometimes the wrong thing gets clicked. But for them, only the links will be clickable. So that will eliminate that option completely. Another option, and I am putting both of these slides on there just because I know some people don't like to go through the process of picking out books. You can just make this a reading slide with your reading announcements or your reading goals or your reading homework, reading assignments, and just fill this shelf with any books that you have. Right now, I just have random selections of books that I've just dropped right in there. I have had a lot of people saying I can't find cute things and there is a big trick that I didn't share last time. So these are going to be my two biggest tips is that Google images and the ones that come up on Google slides are not always the best. And sometimes you find a perfect image on Google and you can't get rid of the background and there is a really easy way to do that. Let's say you did transparent couch image. You searched and you searched and you found one that you just love. And it has these little grid, this grid background, so it makes you think that it's going to be transparent. But then when you put it in, you realize, oh no, they tricked me again. There is an easy fix. Now you will go to, and I usually open this tab in a whole different window because it makes it easier for the dragging and dropping that you'll have to do. So let's just move this guy over here. So this website, I will also link this down below, is simple as this, remove.bg, remove.bg for background. And it takes you here. So all I do here, I'll put this over here. I will find the picture. This just makes it so you don't have to keep saving and downloading. 
I'll take the picture that I want to get rid of the background in and I'm just dragging it into that window. It takes just a second or two. And here it says remove background. I'll just copy the new image, go back to my slides and when I paste it, there we go. It's almost perfect. It works almost every time. So you can do that with so many different things. If you wanted to add real images from your classroom, um, there's so many different options. So you can work with just about anything. I also had a lot of people asking about my comedy club. So my students like to send me jokes. It's always been a thing that we have done all year long. They'd leave them on my desk for me. So it didn't stop when we switched to remote learning. What they do here is they can share a joke with me through Google Forms and the link is actually here, but I will show you first. So this background comes just like this and I'll leave the template up there too. I share the joke here and the next one, usually I change my Bitmoji to me rolling on the floor laughing. Now it says this, click on the comedy show logo to submit a joke and you already know the drill guys, right? All you'll do is you'll click on comedy show, click on the paper link, paper clip, not the paper link, and you'll put the link that you want that to go to right here. I already have my link saved down at the bottom. Like I told you, I always put them at the bottom just in case. And we will put it right in. And there we have it. Now when students click on comedy show, the link comes up when they click on it it takes them right to the tell me a joke google form and guys this is the most easy thing to manage tell me a joke what's the answer it's just so easy so that's my comedy club it's very easy very manageable and the kids love it two more this is just a fun little background slide you can decide what to do with this one i've used it for my office hours so every day i have live office hours on google meet I'll just put the hours right here every day and this link will take them to the Google Meet. It is a link that is generated through my Google Classroom, which means that when they click on this link, it will not take them to Google Meet unless I am already in it. So that's just a safety feature that they've added that is super awesome. And the last slide that I had some fun with was my lunch bunch slide. If you're like me, you're a teacher who's missing your students and this lunch bunch slide really gets them exciting. They check this one all of the time because they want to have that small group time. So I have students with one, two, three friends sit down for lunch with me on Google Meet. And this slide, if they click here, it'll take them to another form that will tell you all about the days that they've earned and when they can meet me and if they've been invited to somebody else's. So those are my slides. I hope that this has been really helpful. I think that the, I almost forgot. I said that there were two really important things and I only told you about remove.bg. Something else that has been extremely important for me is finding a way to remove those ads for YouTube videos. Now, I've showed you that Google Slides will already remove this, the ads, but if you are not using Google Slides, this is just really quick. This is called Safe YouTube, safeyoutube.net. All you do is you paste the link of a YouTube video here, hit generate link, and it will spit out a new link that is not connected to YouTube that will display that video only. It will not start playing the next video, it won't recommend new videos, and it won't show any ads. So that is just another secret little trick that I use all the time and it's really changed the game for me. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. These slides, the kids have been loving being able to click on things and have new things to look forward to. So I hope that you're able to learn a little bit from this one. And again, I'm going to link the slides if you wanted to look at them on Teacher Pay Teacher and I'll try to add some other helpful links at the bottom too. So thank you guys for tuning in and hopefully I'll be able to make another one soon.